Hi, this is Herb Shapiro of the Dr. Vax channel. And does it look like you're watching a video about how to install an electrical outlet into a wall? Well, you're not. And this is not an electrical outlet. This is a secret compartment where you can store your valuables. So if you wanna learn how to 3D print a compartment like this, how to mount it in a wall, how to attach the front plate, well, Continue watching and let's learn something together. Okay, let's get started by looking at the various components we need to build our secret compartment. First of all, we're going to need the 3D printed parts. There are two 3D printed parts. I will link to the Thingiverse files for both of these down below. You can print these on your own 3D printer. I printed these in PLA at a 0.3 millimeter layer height. You can use a very coarse layer height because you don't really care about what it looks like because nobody's gonna see it. So speed is more important. The reason they're two pieces is by making it two pieces, you can print them without support. Now, if you're new to 3D printing and that doesn't mean anything to you, it just means they're easier to print. They, they pressure fit together, they slide together, it is a tight fit. And because there is about 30 millimeters of material here, you can slide a little further, a little less far on in order to adjust the size. Once you're sure of the size you want, I would run a bead of super glue along this edge. The next thing you'll need is eight magnets. Now, when you go to buy magnets, there are two different types you'll see. You'll see ceramic magnets, and you'll see neodymium magnets. The neodymium magnets are significantly stronger. They're double the price, but we're still talking a few bucks here. And good ones will be marked with a north and a south pole, and therefore a north goes to south and vice versa. These magnets are quite strong. If you don't know this is here, you will have trouble getting it open. You wouldn't know to open it up. In fact, to get it open, you'll probably have to take and slide something under the edge to pry it up because it is a very, very tight fit. The way I put the magnets on is they come with double stick tape, but I actually put a drop of super glue in the middle of the double stick tape. I put pairs of the madness in each corner so I glued one side down, then I put a second magnet on top, I put a drop of super glue on it, and at that point, I attached them together. And then I put a couple books on it, weighed it down, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and we were good to go. Now, the other tools you'll need is you'll potentially need a stud finder. We'll look in a minute at how to use that. It's helpful to have a power drill. If you don't have one, you can actually use a nail and a hammer to poke a starting hole. This is a drywall cutting tool. You can also use just a utility knife, but it'll just be a little bit more work. And we'll show you how this all goes together. Then obviously you need the faceplate for your outlet and you need two sockets because you want it to look like a real outlet. The faceplate was under $2. Each of these were 99 cents at a big box store. Uh, you don't need expensive ones. In order for these sockets to fit, there are little tabs on the end that you'll see have score marks. You'll need to bend them back and forth and remove those to make this a little bit smaller. Now, we can take and put in our outlet. You should put them so they line up in the same directions. Put this in here and screw it in. Okay, now that we have this screwed together, it's time to snap it back together to make sure it fits. Now, you may be able to see here that I've labeled the top here and the top here. Neither you'll be able to see. And the reason is that these magnets do have polarity, so you have to make sure, once again, you're lining up north and south. And if you line it up correctly, even with both outlets in, this is not going anywhere. And this looks just like a regular utility box. Now, let's take a look at our wall and what we're going to need to do to install this. In the United States, walls are made of two by fours. Two by fours are on 16 inch centers. 
In Europe, they're not, they use the metric system. Um, and so depending on the construction, they may not be using two by fours. They may be using really 40 by 90 millimeter boards or similar dimensions. They do not center on 16 inches. I believe they center often on 30 or 60 centimeters, depending on the construction. The principle though, the concepts are the same. You don't want your box to be deeper than the width of your framing lumber, because you don't want to hit the other side. That's one of the reasons this is two pieces and you can slide it further together or pull it further apart. Now, we won't be, you won't be able to see this framing lumber when you're looking at your wall. So one of the ways to find where that framing lumber is, is to use a stud detector. Um, I have one here. Another way is just to look for an existing switch box. Generally switch boxes are screwed into the side of studs. So that'll give you an idea of where the studs are. Then in the United States, as an example, you could mark 16 inches. So we're going to put our box right here. I have this already marked, but basically what you have to do is just put your box where you want it. Make sure it's level. There happens to be a level on this stud finder. And then use a Sharpie to draw a line around it. Now, once you have a line around it, you can drill holes in the corners. And we will use those with our saw to make it easier to cut out the box. You do not want, you do not want to make the cutout larger than necessary because you're going to be placing screws along the outside of the cutout to hold the box in place. So there we go. Now you take your drywall saw and you get it into the first hole. And there we go. So you can see now what this is going to look like when it's fully assembled. Now we can take the front cover off and we have a couple choices. Depending on the um, drywall, we could just take and use screws to attach it here. If we have enough space, and I'm going to mark where these holes are, okay. You can see here that we really cut this a little too big on this side. Um, so this model doesn't give you a lot of space. And the reason is because the back is actually a little bigger than the front. So a, so let's see how we're going to do this. I think we're going to just push this up into one side and then use some screws to screw this directly in. Once again, you may choose to use anchors to make this a more secure connection. Now to make this installation even more secure, line the box up so it's right alongside the side of one of your studs and then put a couple screws in from the side. You can just drill holes right through the plastic and screw it into the side. That will create a stronger connection than any connection you make via the drywall. One of the challenges, as I noted, was that there's not a lot of space here for these screws. In the revised version of this print that I've linked in Thingiverse, you'll notice that each of these side sections are four millimeters wider. That pushes the hole out a little bit further into the body of the drywall. And now we are all set. So we now have a hidden compartment that looks like an electrical outlet. Um, easy to use, easy to install with these remarkably strong magnets. Okay, I hope you learned something. Once again, look for the models down below. I will make an adjustment to the model to give you a little more space for the screws than I had in this example. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And let's continue to learn things together.